Since the 1990s, the location of Magnetic North has been rapidly heading towards Siberia, moving at a rate of 50 to 60 kilometers a year. And while this anomaly has been attributed to blobs of magnetically charged magma vying for dominance deep within the Earth, and not an impending magnetic pole reversal, as some conspiracy theorists would have you believe, New research has come out to suggest that the previous magnetic pole reversal, which took place some 42,000 years ago, might have triggered an extinction event that stripped the Earth of its megafauna. We're going to dive into what that meant for our ancestors and what a future magnetic reversal might mean for us in the here and now. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment when you think the next pole reversal will take place, smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode, and support the channel on Patreon. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Get. In recent years, most scientists have theorized that magnetic pole reversals on Earth are probably a very gradual process, and one that does not impact life on our planet. This is mostly because there just hasn't been enough data regarding the last pole shift to really have a definitive answer. It's ironic then that conspiracy theorists have long been crying afoul of this notion, suggesting that an impending pole reversal could result in cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria, or however the rest of the quote goes. For once though, and I really hate saying this, the conspiracy theorists might have been right. Well, not really, but kind of. Of all the organisms on our planet, trees have the longest lived memories, storing valuable information about the Earth's climate in what are called growth rings. After examining a series of kauri trees in New Zealand dating back to the Last Champs excursion, researchers found an abnormal spike in radiocarbons, or carbon-14, which is not typically found in nature in large quantities, dating back to around 42,000 years ago. Now, with this data, scientists believe that the collapse of the Earth's magnetic field is the cause for this spike in carbon-14. But Chris Fogwell, Alan Hogg, Chris Turney, and Zoe Thomas, the authors of this experiment and accompanying paper published on February 14th in Science, would soon find out that this event led to far more than a simple rise in radiocarbons. Before this study, the Last Champs excursion was thought to be defined by the magnetic poles wandering for an unknown period of time before finally wandering back to their previous locations. And it was thought that the last true pole reversal had happened some 700,000 years ago. With this new data, however, the language has changed. After comparing the data taken from the Kari growth rings with data pertaining to Earth's climate during the same period, Fogwill and company concluded that megafauna across mainland Australia and Tasmania went through extinctions during the same period, causing the extinction of giant kangaroos and giant wombats. <laughs> Which I totally just learned was a thing, and now suddenly I'm really sad that I've never been able to see a giant kangaroo, and at the same time really terrified of what that might actually look like. And this extinction event has now been given a new name, called Adam's Event, cleverly named after the late Douglas Adams who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books. Because the number 42 is the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Before this research, it was previously thought that the rise of modern humans might have played a role in the extinction of Neanderthals, with some researchers going so far as to say that they didn't go extinct at all, but rather were absorbed into the human population. Now, though, it is very likely that Adam's event played a role in their degradation and eventual extinction. But what sort of effects would the megafauna and Neanderthals have been subjected to during this period of time? of Earth's magnetic field would have led to the planet's surface being bombarded by cosmic rays, but Adam's event was a relatively short-lived period of time as far as pole reversals go, taking centuries rather than millennia for the magnetic field to be restored. And before now, we've never been able to correlate the pole reversal with the changes to the Earth's climate during the Paleolithic period that we observed in ice core samples. According to Alan Cooper and the other authors of this study, this event led to the magnetic field weakening to 6% of what it is now before the poles reversed. But that dip in magnetic field strength led to significant changes in atmospheric ozone concentration and circulation. But this could have also led to electrical storms raging across the tropics, 
and the solar wind slamming into the atmosphere would have created stunning aurora displays all over the planet. Arctic winds would have blasted all across North America. Um, hey, didn't that just happen, like, the other day? Uh. Weather patterns shifted violently, and the ice sheets and glaciers would have seen a rapid period of expansion. Now, some people might sit here listening to all of this talk about tree growth rings and think, could the carbon-14 levels have just, like, spiked in that area alone? No, not really. What this paper is basically doing with these tree growth rings is using them like a Rosetta Stone to link all of the samples taken from ice cores, peat bogs, and caves around the world that have been telling the same story. While the Neanderthals spiraled into extinction, modern humans went underground, seeking protection. Though, considering recent evidence which suggests that Neanderthals were highly intelligent, makes me wonder why they wouldn't take refuge too? Maybe humans didn't allow it? Maybe we had some, uh, some cave murder going on? Mm -hmm. We can directly correlate the sudden rise of cave paintings to this period as well which is really telling because they were made by modern humans. But how would modern society handle such a change? How would it affect the rest of the world? According to Dr. Nicholas Thuveni of the European Center for Research and Teaching of Environmental Geosciences in Aen Province, France, the strength of our magnetic field has been decaying at a steady rate over the last 3,000 years, and he believes that a magnetic pole reversal isn't likely in the next million years, 100,000, or even 10,000 years, but within the next 100. Dr. Thuveni and his team of investigators on the five-year edifice project dedicated their time to researching the Earth's previous magnetic pole reversals and finding out when such an event might happen again. If the Earth were to be subjected to a collapse of the magnetic field, then our satellites would just stop working. Auroras would be visible from every part of the Earth, thunderstorms would likely tear across parts of the planet, and the climate would go absolutely bonkers. Well, more than it already is now. What's more alarming is the idea that modern humans 42,000 years ago survived by hiding in caves, and in the Paleolithic era there were probably less than 10 million people on Earth. But today the population has absolutely exploded to 7 billion people. Where would those people be able to take refuge? And how long would this reversal last? Well, according to some studies, it could be anywhere within a human lifetime to 22,000 years. Yeah. That's a really long time for all those people to be hanging out underground. And that's not even considering how many people would be left straggling on the surface, or who would be too stubborn to leave their homes. Like those nice elderly people in the Chernobyl exclusion zone who were so stubborn that their government just caved and let them stay, despite the danger. However, while all of this definitely does sound like doom and gloom, there is a potential answer that doesn't involve 7 billion people transitioning to being mole people. And it's actually a proposed solution to the fact that Mars does not have a magnetic field. We've talked about this one on the show before, too. That's right, we're getting into some speculation. I know you guys love that alarm. If a pole reversal, or at the very least an excursion event, is coming in the next 100 to 200 years, then is it possible that we could set up a reactor in the L1 Lagrange point capable of generating a magnetic field around the planet while the Earth works through its issues? The main problem with this isn't technology. We have it, and we have machines that can generate a magnetic field as powerful as the Earth's. It's resupplying the reactor with fuel. Now, on Mars, this could be a costly endeavor to pull off, depending on how often the reactor needs fuel. But here on Earth, if the alternative to keeping the reactor going is our planet, and all of the cities on the ground getting fried by cosmic rays and the solar wind, I think it would be a worthwhile investment. But hey, that's just a theory. A science theory. Yeah, I'm not Matt Pat. sorry. If you dug this content, be sure to hit that like button, comment what you'd do if you heard the polls were going to start reversing tomorrow. Would you become a mole person? Would you hide in a cave? Smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Cat. And be sure to check out the Patreon, where you can get early episodes of the show, short science fiction, horror, and dark fantasy stories, your name in the credits, possibly NFT art, and so much more. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.